In this video, we're going to examine the external genitalia and perineal region, which is going to be the basic underside of the pelvis, where the genitalia and anal regions are located. It's important to note that the external genitalia respond strongly to estrogens and androgens in the womb, and typically can fall into either phenotypically female or phenotypically male categories, but there's a great deal of variation in their exact appearance and ambiguous genitalia that appear somewhere between the two do occur on a fairly regular basis. But we'll start examining the female external genitalia first. And anteriorly, we have a large area in front of the pubic bone, which has a variable amount of subcutaneous tissue in it called the mons pubis. And it is continuous with this outer area here, that is the labia majora. Labia majora does contain some fat as it's continuous with the mons pubis and subcutaneous tissue here. But just inside of it, we have what's known as the labia minora. And the labia minora contains very little fat, is mostly fibrous tissue, and it surrounds the vestibule. Now, as we discussed in the last video, the vestibule is the common opening site for the urethra and vagina. So we have an external urethral opening, and we have a more posterior vaginal opening. It's not much to look at in this particular model, but here, even more anterior, we have the head or glands of the clitoris, which is a fairly significantly sized organ, but we don't see much of it in this particular model. And in fact, even when I put this part on, we can see the vestibule a bit better here, and we can see one of the crura of the clitoris leading to it, but we'll have a better view of that on another model in just a moment. I want you to note here that in the wall, of the labia minora, we have what's known as the corpus spongiosum of the female, and then posterior to that we have the greater vestibular gland, which is going to release lubricating fluid into the vestibule itself. This model gives us a better view of the deeper structures of the external genitalia, so here we'll turn it so we can look at the inferior surface, and we can note the anal opening here, and out here we have what's known as the urogenital triangle, which is a lot of supporting musculature and external genitalia, as well as some glands and erectile tissues that are associated with them. The clitoris is actually formed by erectile tissues here, here, that come together called the crura of the clitoris, and they fuse to create the body and glands of the clitoris. Now the glands is just poking out here from underneath its prepuce, or clitoral hood right there, but it's the two crura of the clitoris that come together to form the body and head. These are also sometimes referred to as the corpus cavernosum, or, spun or cavernous bodies, that are erectile tissues that can expand the size of the clitoris. Nearby, in the labia minora, we have the corpus spongiosum, also called the bulb of the vestibule, and it is also erectile tissue, can swell the labia minora and vestibule when they're engorged, and posteriorly, although it's colored the same, there is a greater vestibular gland also present here, lubricating the vestibule. We can also note the opening of the vagina and the external urethral opening here. It's important to note that there are muscles that surround these erectile tissues, and although they have names, we're not going to worry about them now, but they are going to be skeletal muscles, so these can compress and allow some control of the activities in the area through that skeletal muscle. The male perineum, like the female, contains the anal region, but thereafter differs remarkably in that we have the scrotum. Now the scrotum is basically located in the same area that the labia majora were, but unlike in the female, we have the testes descending into the scrotum here, Anterior to that, we have the penis. The penis and clitoris are similar structures in the way that they are organized and how they develop, but the presence of androgens or testosterone during development cause it to enlarge, and the two corpus cavernosum come together to form the shaft of the penis, and the corpus spongiosum surrounds the urethra, leaving it opening at the external urethral meatus. Using this model to examine the perineum of the male, we can see once again that we have the anal opening here with the external anal sphincter surrounding it, and anterior to that, once again, the urogenital triangle. 
Now this model is not showing the shaft of the penis, although once again we can see from the last video that cross section of corpus cavernosum on either side and a midline corpus spongiosum. And note here that similar erectile tissues are present in the penis as in the clitoris but are larger. We have underneath this muscle the corpus cavernosum on one side and the other that come together to form the corpus cavernosum on the shaft of the penis located, if I can if I angle it here, just there. And on the midline we have what's known as the bulb of the penis. Midline structure, that is the corpus spongiosum is the name of the erectile tissue within it. Now once again there's skeletal muscle surrounding these erectile tissues giving some degree of willful control over their activity. Returning to the testes, they're an odd organ in that they develop inside the body, drag their blood supply behind them, but exit to reach the perineum and the scrotum, which is what they're going to fill, to keep them at slightly lower than body temperature for effective sperm production. We're going to remove this little part of the model here, and I want you to note that the blood supply and ductus deferens follow the testes on their path. So here, the testes descended into the pelvis and passed through the anterior body wall, forming a deep inguinal ring where it punctured through. And as it came out the anterior side, it made a superficial inguinal ring passing through the musculature of the anterior body wall. Now as it did that, it picked up a layer of smooth, uh, sorry, of skeletal muscle and fascia, and this whole structure now is referred to as the spermatic cord. And the spermatic cord leads us to and from the testes actually in the peritoneal area. Note also that we can see the prostate more clearly here at the base of the bladder. While it is not a perineal organ, it is not hanging out inferiorly, it's inside the pelvis, it is very close, and in fact its proximity to the rectum here is what allows a digital rectal exam to screen for enlargement or hardening of the prostate if it either hypertrophies or develops prostatic cancer.